Hey guys, welcome to another Silhouette Studio tutorial. Tonight, I want to show you how you can create a layered graphic in Silhouette from a coloring page. What? Yeah, you heard right, a coloring page. A black and white coloring page you find online. You can take that and turn it into a cool layered graphic in Silhouette Studio. And if you have Business Edition, you can save it as an SVG and export it out. And if you don't, there are free tools online for you to convert an image to an SVG. So let's head on over to my computer and check it out. So the first thing we're going to need to do is go online and find a coloring page image that you want to use. And I'm going to show you a few ways to search these. So once you go to Google, you can type in Let's say I'm looking for Mickey Mouse. Who doesn't love Mickey Mouse? Mickey, oh, there it is, Mickey Coloring Pages. And you should see a whole slew of images come up. Now, at the very top of your screen, if you're in Google, make sure you go to Images. It's gonna default to all or web links, but go to Images and let's find an image we like. Okay, I love this one, it's so cute little baby Mickey with a cowboy hat. So I'm going to right click and copy this image. You also have the option to right click and save the image on your computer somewhere and then go and find it. That is completely up to you, whichever way you prefer to do it. For me, I'm just right clicking and copying and then I'm gonna go to Silhouette Studio and I'm gonna paste it. Now that I have it here, I'm gonna go ahead and make it a little bit bigger just to make it easier to see. So the next step in Silhouette Studio, we're gonna use a feature called Trace. It's a little butterfly, and it's on the right of your screen. It's like the third or fourth image down. So we're gonna click that, and the Trace panel is gonna open up. You're gonna to wanna to select your Trace area. After that, you're gonna notice your cursor has changed to this cross. You're gonna click it in the upper left corner, outside of your image so that you can drag down and across to cover your entire image or across and down, either or. The main thing is that you want this black screen to cover your entire image. After you get it there, you're gonna notice Silhouette is really smart and it automatically finds the lines that are prominent and traces them. Most of the time, guys, if it's a black and white like this, I would leave the settings just like this so that you have really clean, nice lines when we continue on. Just to show you this threshold over here, say it didn't copy it very well or there were other pieces of it that you wanted to capture, you would turn this threshold up. Right now it's at a 45, so I'm gonna crank it up to 46, 47, 48. What you're gonna notice is the lines get bigger. You can also grab the triangle and drag it right and watch what happens, guys. Eventually it gets blurry and digitized. You don't want to trace like that because your cut lines are going to be everywhere. So I'm going to go back to the default. I think it was like 46. And I'm going to, at the very bottom, hit trace. Now, you could do trace and detach completely up to you. If you do trace and detach, you won't have to move your image over. Now, I like to see my original image, so I'm going to do trace. Now, not much has happened on the screen, but if you click your image and move it over, check what's left behind. It's baby Mickey. So I'm going to click this. The next thing we're gonna wanna do is pick a color and pick a lighter color. And I'm gonna show you why in the next step. So I'm gonna choose light orange. Perfect, why not? Okay, we're going to with Mickey selected, you can either right click and do release compound path, or you can go over to your menu on the side. There is a menu right here, it's called the modify panel. And in here there's also a release. So either or, it's the same difference. So I'm gonna right click and release compound path and watch what happens. My image of Mickey went from being one solid image to a whole bunch of little pieces. I'm gonna undo to show this again. 
So when I traced it, I had one compound path, one image, right guys? So all these little pieces, I can't do anything with them. But when I release compound path, watch what happens. I have a whole bunch of pieces. All those little squares represent a different piece that's selected right now. So watch what happens. I can take the top of his hat and move it off. It's his own piece. Can you see how the layers are gonna come together? Okay, the next thing you're gonna wanna do, I'm actually gonna undo so I can get it back in the right place. Okay, perfect. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is grab the back most piece, and you don't have to do it in this order, but I do it because it makes it easy for me to see. So I'm gonna grab his ear, and I'm gonna make it black. And now look at that, guys. You can really see our layered graphics starting to come together. So of course, his nose should be black. So now I'm gonna go ahead and make that black by clicking it. His eyes would be white. So I'm gonna click on his eyes and make it white. Sometimes it's helpful to use your zoom feature as well because they're little pieces. Let me show you what's hiding down here. See that little bit of his eye right there? I'm gonna make that white. There we go. And I'm gonna go ahead and make the hat brown. And then the little band around the hat, I'm gonna make it a darker brown. And I want you to note something too. I clicked each piece of the hat and made it brown. If you want to select multiple shapes at once, you totally, totally can do that. All you need to do on your keyboard is hold down the shift key before you start clicking. So I'm gonna do that method when I do his bib because there's a lot of little pieces behind his neck. So I'm gonna hold down shift and I'm gonna click this piece, this little piece, the little tail, and the little knot, and this round part hanging down on his bib. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to make that blue. The next thing I'm gonna do is Mickey's little onesie. So for this, I'm actually gonna use the pattern fill. So I'm gonna go over here and find a cute pattern. Let's do green, whatever this is, polka dots. Everyone loves a baby in a cute little onesie. And then I'm gonna make his, the inside of his bib. Let's go with a solid green, yellow, orange. Let's go with a solid orange, guys. Okay, now I'm gonna handle his tongue, make it red, and his face. And I'm gonna grab all the little pieces that I can see. His hands, and he has three fingers over here. I'm gonna make them like a manila kind of color. And that's basically it guys. At this point, we have created a cool layered graphic. Now to take it one step further, what I normally do, I like to group things by colors. So you can do this by using the shift tool I taught you, trick, hold down the shift key and select all the brown that you wanna select or all the shapes. I'm gonna start with the brown on the hat and group. A quicker way you can do this, which we'll do with Mickey's face and hands at the very top of your silhouette, there's a little paint palette. It's right above where you see your dimensions, width and height. Click that paint palette. In the paint palette, you have a selection by color. You can select by line color or you can select by fill. If you look at my screen, all the graphics by default have a red line outlining them. But when I go over to by fill, you see all the different colors. So I'm gonna hit the blue one and I'm going to group. And now those graphics all move together. Do you see it coming together, guys? Okay, I'm also gonna go ahead and group my whites together. And I think that's all we needed to group. Okay, once you have it grouped in layers, guys, you're ready to do whatever you would like to do with your graphic. I like grouping it in layers because when it comes to cutting, I'm not gonna waste all my paper cutting if I have little pieces of this color here and another piece over here. By grouping them, I can move them where I want them on the cutting mat to cut. It saves your material. Also, if you are going to 
Export this as an SVG if you have the business software and you plan on cutting with your Cricut machine, so importing this and the Cricut design, make sure that you group first your colors and then also do one final group of everything at the end. If you don't, what happens in Cricut design, <laughs> your pieces can be jumbled. I've seen this happen. There have been times when I've created cool text graphics, sent it to someone, they went to cut it in their Cricut design space, and they're like, why are the letters everywhere? And I was like, oh, that's why. I need to group and or make compound paths of things. Well, that's pretty much it, guys. What did you think? Pretty neat, right? And actually, I got something to show you. These I created using the exact same method. They're kind of hard to see in this lighting, so I will definitely post the picture. But I had a birthday party for my little one when she was two, and we did a Mickey Mouse theme. And so I used scrapbook paper for Minnie's dress and cardstock for all the fun images like the bow and the ice cream. And then for Mickey, cardstock and his pants are actually red and white cardstock pieced together. So you can see how I took a coloring page, used my software to convert it into a layered graphic, and then cut it out in different colors to make these cool party decorations. The sky is the limit with Silhouette Studio. I hope you liked the video and learned something. Please subscribe, please like, please share. And in the comments, let me know what else you would like to know how to do in Silhouette Studio.